All right. Here we are again on Tuesday night, four o'clock. I want to thank you for joining us, those of you who are online and those of you who decided to show up tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, any participation is welcome. But before we begin, let's first thank our sound guys in the back. Ward, who's in charge of making sure that everything's broadcast seamlessly with about, I don't know, 20,000 computers stacked on one top of another. No, he's amazing. He's kind of a genius when it comes to that. And then Dave, the cameraman, and I've been calling Dave Skinny Dave. And uh, so he's, he's handling the camera. So I want to thank those guys. But let's thank the Father also. Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, Abba, I pray that you help us to set this time aside and set it apart so that we can dive deeper into your word. I pray, Father, that this study will be one that will bring praise and honor to your name and that you help us glean from these scriptures anything that you want us to carry forth with us. I ask that you forgive us for our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquities and bless our efforts to draw closer to you in the way that pleases you. And I ask this in Yahushua's name. Amen. So, last week, I, I did watch, uh, I wasn't here last week, and Ralphie took over. But a couple of things that Ralphie talked about was being a stranger. Uh, he talked about the Levites and how they were supposed to guard the tabernacle. And that they would not allow strangers to draw near or come into the tabernacle. So we're going to cover some of that ground again. And I can see Miss Pat coming. So we're going to have her here. Uh, but yeah, let's, let's cover some of that regarding the stranger. Hello, bud. How are you? Excellent. So I'm going to begin by reading in Leviticus. I mean, I'm sorry, Leviticus. I keep saying Leviticus. We were in Leviticus for almost a year. I'm going to be in Numbers. And I'm going to read Numbers here where it says in chapter 3, These are the generations of Aaron and Moshe when Yahuwah spoke with Moshe on Mount Sinai. And these are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the anointed priests whom he ordained to act as priests. And Nadab and Abihu, who died before Yahuwah when they brought strange fire in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. So Eleazar and Ithamar acted as priests in the presence of Aaron, their father. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and set them before Aaron the priest, and they shall serve him, and shall guard his duty, and they shall guard his duty and the duty of the congregation before the tent of appointment to do the service of the dwelling place. And they shall guard all the furnishings of the tent of the appointment, and the duty of the children of Israel to do the service of the dwelling place. And you shall give the Levites to Aaron and his sons, and they are the given ones, given to him from among Israel. And appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall guard their priesthood, and the stranger who comes near shall be put to death. Okay, let's pause right there, because it's talking about the stranger who comes near. Who do you think the stranger who comes near might be? There's a mic for you if you want to, uh, Jeff, if you uh We're talking about the stranger who might come near the tabernacle. I know Ralphie talked about the stranger last week, and we're going to go over that again a little bit today before we move on. Because I think it's relevant for us today, and I think it's important. And if you get ready to speak, make sure you've got the mic turned on and point it toward you. Hello? Oh. 
I would say a stranger would be somebody who's against God and his people who's trying to turn them away. Okay. Make sure you turn it off when it's back pointed. Any other thoughts about who the stranger might be? That the Levites would put to death? We're in Numbers chapter 3, and we're reading from verse 10. Oh, I guess it's up on the screen. Duh. All I have to do is just turn around and look. I'm looking right here on narrow band focus. And any comments online, uh, raise your hand and get my attention. Welcome, Ashante. Any other thoughts about who the stranger might be? All right, well, let's take a look at this and let's kind of dissect it a bit. So the Levites are the given ones, according to verse 9. They have responsibility to the people of Israel to serve him. To serve who? To serve Israel, but also to serve yod heh And they are supposed to, according to this, guard their priesthood. So if we look at the camp, the way the camp was arranged, the 12 were divided into three sections. I mean, there were three tribes on all four sides. And then, so that was kind of like a fence or a perimeter on the outside. And then inside of that, you had the Levites who were also surrounded by, uh, uh, by the 12 tribes. And then in the center of that, you had the wilderness tabernacle. So I'm trying to paint a picture and I don't have any visuals to show you, but thinking from that, you have outside, inside, closer, the Levites, and then the tabernacle that they're supposed to guard from the strangers. The duties that were assigned to the Levites were to guard what? The Mishkan, the tabernacle. They were the only ones assigned to guard it. The rest of the set-apart people from the 12 tribes of Israel were not supposed to come near. They were considered strangers. Yeah, they were considered strangers because that was not their priestly duty. Let's take it in context. Let's go back a little bit, and let's go back to... One of the verses here where it talked about Nadab and Abihu in verse 4. Can we get somebody to read verse 4 for me? In Numbers chapter 3. Pat, please. And Nadab and Abihu died. Hang on. Can we get a mic hot going on here? Okay, it's ready. Fine, I just didn't wait long enough. And Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered strange fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai. And they had no children, and Eleazar and Ithamar ministered in the priest's office in the sight of Aaron, their father. One of the translations here says unauthorized fire. Let's take a look at this word. Um, spread out, something that's scattered, something that's unknown. There's a lot of different, uh, oh, one of the words used here is vomit. Scat interesting, strange, when a strong scattering, the scatter, the squeeze, when grain squeezed out, comes out to be strange one who is scattered abroad a snare uh, and then it goes on it even connects with the word sorcery and to sprinkle so and the word here to be strange or be a stranger is zur 
So here Nadab and Abihu were priests. So it's not talking about somebody who, well, I guess you could say, did they approach properly? They didn't approach properly. So my understanding from looking at this when it talks about the stranger, if the Levites were set apart for special service regarding the tabernacle, their role and assignment was specific for them. Could any Levite be high priest, just raise their hand and say, I want to be the high priest? What would be the consequences of that? Probably death. Death. So could any one from among the 12 tribes come and decide that they wanted to approach the wilderness tabernacle? No, they had to be from the tribe of Levi. They had to be from the tribe of Levi. So here what we're seeing is a pattern of selection, and then you can call it election or choosing, and then separation. Or you could say selection, separation, and then election, because what God did is he selected a people, brought them out of Israel, I mean Egypt, Mitzrayim, and then that people, he separated them, because we're in this chapter that most people call numbers because they took the census and they counted them and then they divided them into different based on their their fathers and their inheritance and now he's calling out the Levites and giving them a special assignment anybody remember why they were called out and set apart what what made them so unique what did they do All right, you Bible students. Do you remember in the case with the, uh, I know, Shanti, you got this answer, girl. Where are you at? Kurt, welcome online. So in the case of the golden calf, ah, Shabbat Shalom, go for it. I had the answer to a question. Did it work in? I didn't know. Did it work in? Shalom. I can't hear anything. Okay. Uh, okay, I can hear you now. You were muted by mistake, and so I didn't hear the question. Okay, so the question was, why were the Levites selected with this specific role of guarding uh, the Mishkan or the tabernacle? Why were they selected? How did they distinguish themselves? They distinguished themselves. I can hear my feedback. <laughs> but they, they he, Yahuwah selected them because they did not follow the abominations of the rest of the, um, for idolatry, basically, in the wilderness. Right? Did you hear me? I heard you. Okay. Was there a specific example that you wanted to give or share? If not, I could. Calf incident. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So one of the things that they were ordered to do is to not show partiality. They were supposed Absolutely. to go to the go through the camp, right? Okay. Oh, but the sensor. No, they were supposed to go through the camp with their sword drawn, and they would basically put to death, pierce through anybody 
who had taken part in this, whether they were mother, father, sister, brother, or any kin. And they did exactly what they were told to do. Because they took, they were obedient. And so they were set apart because of obedience. Hallelujah. So that's why they were in charge of this. So when we go to verse 10, And it says, or we can start at 8, And they shall guard all the furnishings of the tent of appointment and the duty of the children of Israel to do the service of the dwelling place. And you shall give the Levites to Aaron. And there are, they are the given ones, given to him from among the children of Israel. And appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall guard the priesthood, and the stranger who comes near shall be put to death. So that stranger could be anyone among Israel that was not supposed to draw near to try to usurp the, the priesthood, take control, or try to bring strange fire. They would be put to death. So... In today's modern term, well, we're called to be priests. We're called to be priests to the Most High. Do you think it's changed how we approach the Most High today? Can we come any way we choose? Any thoughts? You guys are quiet. It's that sun out there zapping everybody and making us tired, right? One of the things that I'm going to say, and I'll answer my own question, is that if we look at the biblical patterns of who God is, and he says that he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow, I would think that strange fire is strange fire. And that even the Levites who were called to guard their priesthood. The word guard their priesthood means that they were supposed to take very diligent care to make sure that they wouldn't do anything that would cause displeasure or even their death. And not only that, but making sure that no one else would come and approach it inappropriately. Any thoughts before we skip along? For me, it's a weighty matter. It's weighty in the sense that if we're called to be set apart and separate, we can evaluate what that looks like, not by what Paul says, or, or meaning this Paul, or by what anybody, a pastor or someone else says, but what Scripture says. We can look at the pattern of what being set apart meant. Because you had an entire people, an entire nation set apart, but yet within that, being set apart, they all had different roles and responsibilities. And it reminds me of the example in Scripture where he's talking about, you know, the body. And it says the ear, the eye, and the hand, and not trying to take over for the function that they had. They're all separate and distinct functions. In the camp in Israel, there were separate and distinct functions. And God rep- recognized that because he established it. It's part of the pattern. And so that's just a thought. So let's continue reading. Do we have anybody that want to read, or do you want me to keep going so everybody can hear my voice? <laughs> All right, well, okay, I'll continue reading. Verse 11. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe, saying, Now look, I myself have taken the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens the womb among the children of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine, because all the firstborn are mine. Okay, what happened to my screen here? Hang on. 
See if I can get it back up. Am I going to the iMac or the Mac Mini? Okay. All right. Because all the firstborn are mine. On the day that I struck all the firstborn in the land of Israel, I set apart to myself all the firstborn of Israel, both man and beast. They are mine. I am Yahweh, or I am Yahuwah. And Yahweh spoke to Moshe in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, Register the children of Levi by their fathers' houses, by their clans. Register every male from a new moon, old and above. So Moshe registered them according to the word of Yahuwah, as he had been commanded. Let's pause right there, because it's a little bit different here. Because in verse 13... Verse 12, he says that he took, this is again, that separation, the Levites from among the children of Israel instead of every firstborn from among Israel. So he took them, and they belonged to him. So that was separate again, being separated and dedicated for service to do some very specific things. So, how was God's instruction for counting the Levites different than counting the rest of Israel? Anybody remember? Well, the Levite... Levite census counted all males one month old or more. In the previous chapters we read where they were 20 years of age or older. So that's a huge difference. The Levites were to work in service to the priests, whereas the other tribes were to serve in the army. Okay. <laughs> you guys are making me talk way too much. Any other comments online? Let's see here. Ashante to everyone. Being set apart involves order, a proper functioning of that order, within order. Uh, she also said, I am Yahuwah, I do not change, keep my commandments. And they, they and Kurt to every, oh, that was Kurt. Uh, they did not, he said, get down <laughs> with the gold cow. So, yeah, they, they behaved in a set-apart way. They were then chosen to be set apart because of faithfulness. All right, let, go ahead. Let's get the mic to her. So um, now the Levites, the firstborn, belong to Yahweh. And of the rest of the tribes, did that take, I mean, did the firstborn of the, other, the rest of the tribe's families belong to, Levi, to Yahweh yet? Well, he, he kind of did what you might call crossing the hands over. So in this sense, okay, here's the tribes. Their firstborn would normally be his. They are his. But what he says, instead, I'm going to take the Levites as firstborn, and they will be dedicated to me. So that, yeah, their firstborn would still be their firstborn, but the Levites would be substituted as the firstborn to him, to serve him. So they were dedicated to him. And that's why they were set apart and different. 
Any other thoughts, Pat? So you're saying that the firstborn was special with special right within their own family, but not necessarily firstborn separated to Yahweh, all of them. That's what you're saying? Yeah. They would not be participating. The firstborn among the tribes would not have the temple responsibilities. But in their own family, there would still be the patriarchal blessing. There would still be these things. But as far as being dedicated and set apart for service to yod heh that was going to be the Levite's responsibility. So in essence, they were substituted. And he kind of makes that clear when he says, um, because all the firstborn of mine, I set apart to myself all the firstborn of Israel, man and beast, they are mine. But, now look, I have taken the Levites, going back to verse 12, from among the children of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens the womb of Israel, and the Levites shall be mine. So he basically said, instead of doing that, I'm taking these, and they will be mine. But he clarified, technically, all the firstborn belong to me. So, well, he didn't say technically. I added that. Any other thoughts or questions? One of the things that Jerry did here is he gives uh, Leviticus in chapter 10. And let's go to Leviticus chapter 10 because it's the story of one's oldest son. It's about 20 verses. And let's take a look at it. And if we can get a reader, that would be awesome. Hello? Okay. And Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his fire holder and put fire in it and put incense on it and brought strange fire before Yaqua, which he had not commanded them. <clears throat> and fire came out from Yaqua and consumed them and they died before Yaqua. Then Moshe said to Aaron, this is what Yaqua spoke saying, by those who come near me, let me be set apart. And before all the people, let me be esteemed. And Aaron was silent. And Moshe called to Mishael and to Etzephon, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, Come near, take your brothers from before the set apart place out of the camp. So they came near and took them by their long shirts out of the camp and Moshe had said and Moshe said to Aaron and to Eleazar and to Ithamar his sons do not unbind your heads nor tear your garments lest you die and wrath come upon all the people but let your brothers all the house of Israel bewail the burning which Yahweh has kindled. And do not go out from the door of the tent of appointment, lest you die, for the anointing oil of Yahweh is upon you, and they did according to the word of Moshe. And Yahweh spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or strong drink, you nor your sons with you, when you go into the tent of appointment, lest you die, a law forever throughout your generations. So as to make a distinction between the set apart and the profane, and between the unclean and the clean, and to teach the children of Israel all the laws which Yahweh has spoken to them 
by the hand of Moshe. And Moshe spoke to Aaron and to Eleazar and Ithamar, his sons who were left, take the grain offering that is left over from the offerings made by fire to Yahweh and eat it without leavened bread. The slaughter place for it is most set apart. And you shall eat it in a set apart place because it is yours by law and your sons by law of the offerings made by fire to Yahweh. For so I have been commanded. Okay, we can stop there. So I any any thoughts about what was said here in connection with the responsibility of guarding the tabernacle. Give her a mic. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's get Elaine and then get Ashante. Um, in verse 9, it says, You shall not drink wine and fermented drink, you nor your sons with you, as you go into the tabernacle of congregation, and you shall not and you shall not die, a never-ending statute throughout the generations. It makes you think that um, Nahab and Abihu, um, <laughs> that they might have been drinking. Yeah, that's true. Might have been. Ashanti, go ahead. Okay, shalom. Um back it's real but um yes Aline that um just to um piggyback up on what you said that's what my husband Isaiah has been um emphasizing since we've been on this chapter that they were drinking but also you see that as the Levites they were the dedicated firstborn for the tabernacle work and as dedicated um vessels to be used in this function they didn't they was not walking in a purpose they were out of alignment or out of order so it goes back to understanding and functioning within the order that they have been abiding took matters in their own hand and yes if you were strong for just any type of substances in you or whether whether it's your own thoughts and you're not coming in there with your mind fully on Yahuwah, then um, you're, it's profane as a dedicated person. And so I think their job, they just for the function and in order during this time. And then that's why now you have the command, these additional commandments on how to serve within the tabernacle. And I think that's important. Thank you, Ashanti. So. Sorry, I have one more. Go ahead. Mike, Michael, go ahead. Michael. Shalom, everybody, Michael here. You can hear me or no? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, blessings, Paul. Hey, Nahab and Abihu, Aaron and Moses, and the elders went up and ate and drank uh, with the Shem. And so that's pretty amazing. They actually broke bread with the Shem. And then later on, even though they broke bread with him in a meal, uh, Ahab and Abihu get uh, toast, as you might say, because they brought strange fire. But it's kind of an important thought to put in everybody's uh, soul, spirit, or whatever. You know, we can do things wrong, I guess. Yep. Alone. That's it. Okay. So, go ahead. We have another comment? No. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant to be. You have one?
Okay. So in Leviticus chapter 10, it tells the story of Aaron's eldest son. The story makes us aware of the power of God's holiness, or I'm going to say how set apart he is, and the importance of worshiping him the way he has instructed us to worship him. So I know I was raised basically that, yeah, we're kings, we are, we're priests. You know, the New Testament, we can, you know, we pretty much, the idea of this, that we were anointed and appointed and we can come any way we want to, all we have to do is just, I don't see that pattern laid out in Scripture, and I don't even see that in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. I think being set apart is being set apart. And we have to be careful how we walk and how we approach the Father. Um, it's life and death to be casual about it. So it's a reminder to me not to be casual about even approaching. Any other thoughts before we continue on? Go ahead, Jeff. I think now that since uh, Yeshua came and the when his when his uh, upon his death the the curtain was torn, so I do believe that you can come to God in a bad state. A lot of people do, but then there's the Holy Spirit. You need to you need to grow in that. You know, like you know, there's a lot of people who are on drugs or whatever. You know, they mm -hmm. just. Uh, Maybe been, maybe have been abused, and now that you know uh, they they accept Christ, you know, and you know, but they need to. We need to build upon that, and uh, unfortunately, we're not. Most churches don't teach the really full truth of everything, in my opinion. So. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Yes, we can approach, but who are we approaching? We're approaching a high priest. And the high priest goes into the Holy of Holy and intercedes in our behalf. So there's still the form and function of office. And we, in Leviticus, we were talking about how the leper, what would take place. The leper was outside of the camp, and then the Kohenim would come outside of the camp and check on him. And if his leprosy had gone away, then there was a period of time that he could actually come back and check, see if he was clean. And he could come into the camp, but he couldn't go make an offering. And then there was this stages. There were these stages. And eventually, he could go make the offering, but he's still going to give the offering to the ones that function as priests. From my past studies, it was, uh, I think, like 10% of the people who were healed by Yeshua ever came back and thanked him or just really followed what he said. Mm -hmm. So that should tell you something, I guess. Yeah. So thinking in terms of, okay, if those who were priests still had to give their offering to the high priest or those who were allowed to officiate even as priests, they could not even approach any kind of way that they wanted to. All the priests didn't have the same function. As you can see, when we started continuing on in reading, that some had the function of carrying the utensils, some had the function of uh, um, what lighting the uh, the fire, some had the function of baking the bread and putting the bread. I mean, there's all these different functions in the same house, but they all had the responsibility as Levites. But they were Levites that were set apart to do different things. Which brings us to today that sometimes we feel like, well, you know, I want to do what, 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 what Ward is doing. That would be chaotic. I, I can't do what Ward is doing. Now, Ward has a special set of skills to do what he's doing. And we pray that the Father blesses him to do what he's doing. Now, on the other hand, if somebody wanted to train under Ward and we're not going to be as literal as maybe it was then, then that would be one thing. But Sometimes I think we feel like, well, you know, I'm called to do this, so therefore I'm going to do it. And I think that's where the body 
even in the church, gets all these divisions and factions and people splitting up because they decide that they want to run and do their own thing. Well, just my opinion, again, I think we should err on the side of caution versus the side of rebellion. Yes, please. So uh, who are, in today's world, who are the Levites? <laughs> you know, that's a good question, and I don't have a good answer for you. Um, I, I would say that we don't have anybody functioning as Levites unless we are. But let's just say in this fellowship, it's, the Levites weren't called to be leaders in the sense of the world's leaders they were supposed to serve so they were serving israel and guarding so in a typical congregation like here um pat serves dave serves ward serves i serve uh, mark serves holly serves jeff serves we all serve we serve one another and we defer to one another to the edification and building up of the body now, we may serve in different capacities. The women that were helping with the decorations, they were serving. Are they serving in a lesser way than maybe Ward and Dave? No. Are they serving in a different way? Yeah. The ones that decide that they're going to spend time preparing food for Oneg, are they serving? Yes. Are they serving and building up the body? Yes, they are. And then there are some who comment. And then there are some who don't comment, but they function in other ways. So when we start looking at it and saying, okay, they're serving and they're building up the body, edifying one another, then in a way that's a pattern that we could say is kind of like um, the Levites, but that pattern also fell upon the responsibilities of the 12 tribes because those 12 had elders. And then below those elders, you would have had the family heads. And those family heads were supposed to follow the Torah, and they were supposed to teach their children. So each one had a responsibility, a set-apart responsibility, so that the set-apart people would function as a set-apart group or a set-apart nation. That's the only way I can see it. But, you know, and again... That's a simplistic version of what I see taking place, for better or for worse. You know, we have some congregations that may imitate that better than others and be structurally more organized with more people, fewer people, just a smaller family than some of the bigger ones. Any thoughts? Any light bulbs flashing? I would say, you said judicial order. I would say, yeah. I would say there is an order to it, and that was something that uh, was mentioned here, is order, not chaos. And it, it's following patterns. So let's see here. Let's continue reading. Let's see, we left off. Where did we leave off? Jeff, do you remember? These are mine, register the children. So Moshe, reg okay, here we go. In verse 16, let's, can we continue reading? And <laughs> Did you say 16? Yes. And Moses diligently sought the goat of the sin offering, and behold... Uh, it and numbers. Help. Sorry, we were in Leviticus. And Moses numbered them according to the word of the Lord, and he, as he was commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names, Gershon and Koath and Mariat. And these are the names and the sons of Gershon by the families, Libni and Shimi. And the sons of Kohath by their families, Amram and Isar and 
Hebron, and Uziel, and the sons of Merai by their families, and Mali, and Mushi. These were the families of the Levites according to the house of their fathers. Of Gershon was the family of the Libnites and the family of Shemites, and these were the families of the Gershonites. Those that were numbered of them according to the number of all the males from the month old and upward, even those that were numbered of them were 7,500. The families of the Gershonites shall pitch behind the tabernacle westward, and the chief of the house of the fathers of the Gershonites shall be Elisaph, the son of Lael. And the charge of the sons of Gershon and the tabernacle of the congregation shall be the tabernacle and the tent and the covering thereof and the hanging for the door and the tabernacle of the congregation and the hangings of the court and the curtain for the door of the court which is by the tabernacle and by the altar round about and the cords of it for all the service thereof and the Kohath was the family of Amorites and the family of Isharites and the family of Tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping the charge of the sanctuary for the charge of the children. Israel and the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. All that were numbered of the Levites, Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the Lord throughout their families. All the males from a month old and upward were twenty and two thousand. And the Lord said unto Moses, Number all the firstborn of the males and of the children of Israel from the month old and upward, and take the number of their names. And thou shalt take the Levites for me, I am the Lord, instead of all of the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites, instead of all the firstlings among the cattle of the children of Israel. And Moses numbered as the Lord commanded him, all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and all the firstborn males of the number of man names, from a month old and upward, and of those that were numbered of them were twenty and two thousand, two hundred and threescore and thirteen. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel, and of the cattle of the Levites and instead of their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine, I am the Lord. 
and for those that are to be redeemed of the two hundred and three score and thirteen of the firstborn of the children of Israel, thou shalt even take five shekels apiece by the pole. After the shekel of the sanctuary shalt thou take them. The shekel is twenty giras, and thou shalt give the money wherewith the old odd number of them to be redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons. And Moses took the redemption money of them that were over and above them that were redeemed by the Levites. Of the firstborn of the children of Israel took he the money, a thousand and three hundred and threescore and five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moses gave the money of them that were redeemed unto Aaron and to his sons according to the word of the Lord as the Lord commanded Moses. Thank you, Pat. That was quite a bit, actually. We're going to have to break it down into bite. Notice that they had different responsibilities. So Gershon would be to the west. They're responsible for the tent and the curtains. Kohath was to the south and responsible for the tabernacle furnishings. And Mariah was going to be to the north and responsible for the frames, poles, and the hardware. And then, of course, uh, Moshe and Aaron, they would be responsible for the more sacred, well, I shouldn't say more sacred, but they had a certain set of part functions. What I find interesting is that each one of these were assigned different things. And it's like what we were talking about. The uh, Kohath could want to do the tent and the curtains. It's like, no, you weren't assigned that. And then those of Gershon couldn't go and say, well, we want to handle the frame, the poles, and the hardware. Very distinct order. Any thoughts? So it says, list each clan. Well, we've already done that. Their numbers. We've got their numbers. Gershon was 7,500. Uh, Kohath, 8,600. Marairi, 6,200. And they were camped different in different places. So from God's perspective, why were the Levites set apart for himself? We kind of touched about this on this. Why were they set apart for himself? Not a trick question. Could be. Pat's getting ready. The Jeopardy question. And Pat, for 2,500 Levites, give me the answer to the question. It just seems to me like it's, it's his prerogative, and he needed the work done that he assigned them to do. Yeah. I don't know what more you're looking for than that. Oh, 
whatever you had to share is what I'm looking for. That's about it. Hey, I got a comment. Okay. Michael here. Hi, Michael. Hey, you know, Mark Webb, being on the Ahab Bayou thing and Moses and all that, Mark Webb on his Apple computer years ago has a spot where Moses and Aaron stood on the mountain, uh -huh. the 70 elders, and it shows they were completely white where Moses and Aaron were standing, and they have it by you, and the 70 elders are standing in the bigger circle. It's completely white. The rest of the mountain is completely black. Huh. It has a satellite picture of the Apple computer. This is amazing, my friend. Anyway, blessings. Hallelujah. It's, it's evidence beyond the shadow without. Shalom. Thank you. And I know Ashanti said agree to very distinct order of all the three Levitical plans. Kurt says because they were obedient, they had proceeded them, uh, or proven themselves worthy. And uh, all of those are answers. So in Numbers 3.12, it says, I have taken the Levites in place of the first male offspring of every Israelite woman. The Levites are mine. So again, he's stating, the Levites belong to me. And for the service of the tabernacle and to serve the camps of Israel. Pat, you have a thought? Or are you just holding the mic and pointing it at me? Okay, good deal. Well, we got three minutes. Any questions? Any thoughts? Any homework? I'm going to read something that Jerry... Oh, were you going to make a comment? I'm going to read something that Jerry put here. It says, uh, Numbers 3, 11 to 13. God stakes his claim to every firstborn in Israel. When does he say this? Does it give you insight into God's sense of fairness? Also, God allowed the Levites to take place of every firstborn. This introduces us the concept of substitution or redemption, allowing one person or thing to take place of another, a key role for the Mashiach to take place for another. Interesting. I hadn't thought about it that way. So what we're starting to see is patterns where, yes, one can be substituted for another to actually take the place in a function. So, yeah, it's an interesting thought. Well, we have about two minutes. Uh, let's see, agree, function, obedience. Uh, let's see, Ashante to everyone. We see throughout Ezekiel and some minor prophets the rejection of the Levitical priesthood. Do you want to talk your comment or do you want to type it? I guess I could talk it. Go ahead. I was studying some from last um, Torah Tuesday. And I was just really like dwelling on what Ralphie and was sharing at that time and what we we're talking about today. But just as a nation of people, we see that Yahuwah's mercy is to a certain point at for certain times. And so like, um, as I've been listening throughout the Bible during my day, my work days, and um, just listening to the prophets, like um, Ezekiel 8 is a good chapter or Hosea 4. And, you know, he says, I have rejected you from being priests. And it's mainly because of, disobedience and this strange fire and this disorder that they have that they started to bring within his tabernacle and that's why we had to have the Mashiach to replace um, that order that earthly order because as men we fail we fall short right not just the priests fell short but we as a people we as a nation we fell short I mean, many of them did not enter into the promised land because 
they fell short. And so we just have to be mindful that as, as the Most High wants to establish his order with those who are going to Shema to truly heed, right? That we just to hear and obey, but to truly walk in his presence. It's, it, it, that's what being Kadosh, going back to being Kadosh, being set apart and so mindful as to not fall short. And um, especially like where, to where you're like just downright transgressing. And that's what we started to, that's what those chapters are about. So you see this dismantling of the priesthood throughout the Levitical um, priesthood towards the latter part of the history within the minor prophets and some of the major prophets. So that's all I wanted to say. And it's just a reminder for us to remain humble, to be teachable, and just to learn how to truly heed what the Most High is telling us. Thank you very much. All right, well, let's close with prayer. Thank everybody here. Heavenly Father, your word, your word is made clear to us in terms of what you expect, what you expected from your people to be a set-apart people. We all function differently in different capacities in different ways. And Father, you are our maker. You are the potter. You can mold and shape us to be whatever vessel you want us to be. And Father, I pray that we do not covet the assignment that others have. We do not covet the giftings and the responsibilities that they have, but we all serve one another with gladness because we're serving you. Pray, Father, that you do forgive us for our sins, our transgressions, and our iniquities, that you help us to walk in a way that pleases you, and that build up and edify the body as we do that. I thank you for those who participated online and those who are here, and I ask that your spirit would go with each one of us, and I ask this in Yahushua's name. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next week. Hold on.